All right, everyone, welcome to another episode here of Beyond the Headlines, where me and my co-host Steve, we just talk about all the headlines that are going on in the market. We were just talking in the green room here about how there's a lot going on right now. So we tried to narrow down the most important uh, things we think that will affect the market. And as always, we dive into the charts and tell you what's actually happening, because sometimes, quite often, I would say those two things I uh, disagree. So we were already talking about, because I know you're big in the uranium play, we were always talking about that a little bit earlier, Steve. It seems like a funny way to always start it. Um, uranium breaking out, but you said SMR isn't quite yet, right? No, not quite. I mean, uh, we've talked every week about trading around, and I literally, if you see my eyes darting back and forth, I'm trying to manage three <laughs> accounts. And Andy showed me URA, and I immediately jumped into SMR and NNE. They're both pulling back on their trend line. No other technical reason other than I feel like it's a good trend line buy on those two stocks mm -hmm. with URE popping as a catalyst. So it's nothing more than that. Yeah, and I, I couldn't find anything in the news for URA, but it is a really nice looking chart, right? It's attempted the breakout here, pulled back, right? We always talk about you never try to chase that that initial breakout, pull back uh, into this kind of $30 area. That was big right here and big right here. It's been big for, for a while. Um, yeah, so really nothing in the news, but interesting looking candle. We'll see how the day closes. We, as always, are recording this about halfway through the day, so uh, a lot of day... A lot of day left. So let's just get into it. We'll, uh, we got some crypto talk, but we'll leave that more to the end. Um, retail sales climb ahead of the holiday season, which is kind of interesting. Usually you get a big bump for retail sales during the holiday season. But this one started a little bit earlier, just showing that uh, the U.S. economy is still doing good. There's people still have money. They're spending it on stuff. Um, but I'm taking a look at the XRT chart right here. And for those who don't know, this is the retail ETF. And it's pretty, pretty ugly day so far. So, it, you know, gapped up uh, a number of days ago, and it's been pulling back, uh, basically opened right at the high, and now we're sitting right at the low. So, so I don't, I don't know what you think there, Steve, for me, I'm just looking at this as this 80 bucks seems to be a really important area for it. It can't seem to get going over that until that happens. I'm not really interested. Yeah, technically, it's just a mess. It barely broke out of its little range. It's coming back to test its range. Um, I just don't really see a lot going on there. And I, I hate to get fundamental, but you know we're we're in a, a tough economy right now. So I mean, the retail tr uh, consumer is struggling out there. Nothing really seems to be kind of breaking away uh, in retail land. I, I guess maybe maybe the super rich, you know, JW Nordstrom. I don't know. I haven't looked at that yet. Right. Yeah, yeah, same thing. Same. Nordstrom. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Nothing Nordstrom's changer. not moving. Uh, Walmart's making new highs, so Walmart's looking good. Uh, Target's Discount. stuck in a range. Costco, this thing's just been a monster. Mm -hmm. uh, pulling back a little bit here, nice bottoming tail. But yeah, look at some of these things. And then we got to look at GameStop too, because that's technically a retailer. But yeah, that's that's an ugly wow. looking chart. So a um, little bearish engulfing there. So yeah, so it's just interesting to watch. Again, right, They they're saying the... The retail numbers did climb uh, more than economists expected, but is that is that the numbers being right or the economists being wrong? <laughs> Who knows? A little of both. Uh, Warren Buffett, long pizza, right? So he picked up a bunch of Domino's Pizza and Pool Corp, which I've never even heard of. But um, yeah, so, you know, Buffett's sitting on millions of dollars for the cash and he was interviewed recently and he's just saying, hey, I'm just, I'm looking for places to deploy it. And I just don't see any right now that are his cheap based off his fundamental metrics kind of stuff that he uses. But he did put some money into pool. And that actually made me look. And again, I was telling, telling Steve, if you ever looked at the monthly chart of Domino's Pizza, look at this thing. Just insane from $44, so 10x since 2011, just pretty much in a straight line, which is a little bit of a mess right here. So pizza's a good business, I guess. Yeah, the other note of uh, worthy mention is Buffett apparently is in 28% cash, which is one of the biggest allocations he's been in, I think, since 2008. So that should tell you something. Um, I don't know what, but he is not being aggressive right now. He's nibbling on some pizza and sitting counting his cash. Yeah, people keep trying, you know, in the classic Buffett way, he just doesn't come out and say anything. But people keep, you know, poking and prodding and trying to ask him. And he just says, I don't see anything that's 
super cheap right now. That's his whole, you know, it's different from obviously the way we do things. He does all the fundamental stuff and he looks for companies that he thinks are incredibly undervalued that he understands the business behind. Um, he doesn't see much of it, but he must see that in, in bad pizza. The only other uh, pizza store I can think of is Papa John's. Is that is that that's actually P Z Z A, isn't it? I've never had Papa John's, but oh yeah. So that's that's different story. So looks like some pizzas doing well, and and other pizza here is is certainly doing poorly. So oh, pizza is not the same. Yeah, it didn't get a lift off of that that news at all. Now this pool company again. I don't even. I didn't even look at this. I don't even know what this is, but. Both of these things, it's interesting to note, had a big gap up and then are starting to sell. So that just might be indicative of what's happening in the market today. Uh, but swimming none pools. of these are really interesting. <laughs> swimming pool supplies. So swimming yeah. pools Corrine. and pizza. Yeah, it's yeah. Proper, uh, okay. proper Warren Buffett stuff, right? It's not AI or nuclear energy. It's pizza and swimming pools. He's Existing. Just, well, and pe he's owned Coca-Cola for like 50 years now and he says he's just never ever selling this thing what a chart there what happened there man junk food and pool parties yeah exactly uh last bit of news before we do a little crypto talk is taiwan semiconductor got uh some money i guess from again i looked at it very briefly this thing called the chips act in the states which i guess was just uh something passed in the last administration that just said we want to bring chips away from china and taiwan and we want to put them locally and taiwan semiconductor got some money to build uh, a plant in arizona i think it was yeah in arizona plants three arizona plants so not really affecting the price at all you know it's weird because taiwan is kind of the the king i think of a lot of these chips they make the chip for apples mm -hmm. they make some of the new chips as well uh, kind of looking interesting to me right it, it just because it's come down it's filled this gap right here so they had this earnings gap and it's kind of slowly calmly been coming back to fill that gap what i will say when i was looking at this is nvidia has earnings i think next week and I'm not touching a semiconductor at all until NVIDIA mm -hmm. reports earnings because if, if they miss, the, it doesn't matter what semiconductor you hold, it's tanking. Uh, so, but an interesting looking play. What do you think of the TSM chart? Um, I would say, yeah, I just watch the queues in general, but um, they're selling off here at the moment. But, uh, it's still a long day, like we always say, mm -hmm. but you are correct. N NVIDIA is the king. It doesn't matter what you're in. So you're probably wise <laughs> You know, to not make a lot of bets before now on the 20th, five days yeah. away. Yeah. Um, so Wednesday next week, it looks like, I think. Uh, I would just wait and see what NVIDIA does. But it's an interesting, I think it's an interesting kind of point just to show. And the reason why we decided to do this particular show, right? So this news came out this morning, right? That, hey, the government is going to give this company a bunch of money to build factories in America. If you just read that headline and you were someone who didn't do any kind of thinking on top of that, you say, oh, it's a good thing. They got money. They got funding in order to uh, in order to build things here. Great. They're going to they're going to build more chips. But then you see the price gaps down and then, you know, we're currently sitting on low. So it just shows that, right, that there's many other things that you have to look at besides that headline that's kind of objectively right a good headline you know i'm looking at amd's chart and it's kind of ugly too i don't know what happened to amd along the way they just got smoked by nvidia but um mm -hmm. that's not a good looking chart really especially after earnings well, it's them and it's it's intel i'm still waiting for a moment to like you, you got to imagine this this uh behemoth of a company that makes chips for pretty much every like the computer you're probably you know i use a mac but the mm -hmm. computer you're probably using probably has an intel chip in it right most of them yeah. do uh you got to imagine at some point that this is going to be a good pickup and it's been holding kind of all right here but it just can't can't seem to get off the mat and if you go to the monthly chart right this is this is just ugly 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 maybe some support here at 20 but i don't know maybe again at some point might end up being a good pickup but yeah it's it's you're basically nvidia or you're nothing when it comes to the chip yep. space at this at this point all right, Steve, so let's take a let's take a chat about crypto. So I brought the Doge chart. It's right here just so you can have it. I actually 
own. I always just like to do a full disclosure. I actually bought a bit of Doge. I had just an order above this anchored view app from all time high. And the reason for that is I've just seen it work in crypto so much. I wish I could say I bought Solana as it broke through here at 48. Um, there's been a couple of these things that I've been watching and just anchoring a view app at the all time high of the crypto and using that as my guide to say, this is something I'm interested in. This is something I'm not. And it's just been been working, right? So the Bitcoin being the king, the one that people care the most of, when it got through that anchored view app at 31,000, it's nearly tripled. So Doge last week closed through that high, and it's uh, it's popping up a little bit here today as well. Well, for those that aren't aware, there's a really interesting story. Now, you remember Elon was on Saturday Night Live and making jokes to the moon and Doge, Doge, Doge. And why was Elon pumping Doge? Well, fast forward to now in our country, he and uh, another politician, Vivek Ramaswamy, I pronounced his name correctly, are going to head up the Department of Government Efficiency. And he keeps referring to it as Doge. And I almost don't think there's that much of a coincidence here. It almost feels like Doge is going to play a role in this because what he's going to do is he's going to put up online on X uh, a complete transparent look at all the government programs, the spending, the people, the entities, where the money go, what we get, and then take uh, a poll and get the consensus from people. I just have a feeling that somehow, some way, I'm making a weird prediction here, that Doge and their little ecosystem, whatever you want to call it, um, it's certainly not decentralized, like Michael described to me, um, might play a role in this bizarre new great, if you ask me, Department of Government Efficiency. There's just something weird happening. And I think there's no coincidence that the price is uh, taking off after the election and after the headlines of this new government agency, quote unquote, doge. Yeah. And, and you know, so again, for those who don't, and I looked up a little bit, those who don't know about doge, it, it runs essentially the same as Bitcoin. The, the guy who made it for a joke in his basement copied the Bitcoin code. Um, but basically didn't limit the amount that could be printed. That's that's the main difference is that, you know, you, you, you mine it the same way, it's split on a bunch of people's computers, all of that's the same way. Um, but you can make you can make more of it and, uh, and you can update the code. Whereas with Bitcoin right now, it's so decentralized that to get a consensus of 51% of all participants to update the code would be incredibly hard to near impossible. Uh, we saw that that's why Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin and a lot of these things existed is because um, there was, I'll make this quick, but there was just an argument way back in the beginning of Bitcoin, where half of the Bitcoin community wanted Bitcoin to be like a currency, something that you could send money back and forth. Uh, and they were called the small block people. They wanted Bitcoin to generate small blocks, basically update the code so it would update in small blocks. And then the other half of the people said, I don't want this to be a currency. I want it to be um, this big behemoth value storage, you know, digital gold type of thing. And, you know, they fought back and forth and end up that they won that it's going to be not something that you would theoretically use to make large payments because of the 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 big blocks means it takes a long time to transact back and forth. Um, and that's why they created Bitcoin Cash and the Lightning Network and all these things as a way to to um, to do that. So again, Doge uses the initial, but because it's not as kind of widespread, uh, you could theoretically make these changes if you, you know, if you got enough of the, the miners on board, which would just be easier to do. So it'd be interesting to see, but it uses an open blockchain like anything else. So if, if what you're talking about, about... Um, you know, wanting to display more of this information. People have been talking about using blockchains for government uh, transactions for a long period of time because you wouldn't be able to see exactly what the government was buying, which you could tell from a security standpoint would just be a nightmare, but you could tell how much, right? So if somebody sent money to the government, to a, a government agency, you could see what wallets it went to, but then it would be impossible to kind of track because you wouldn't want to know what your what your military is exactly spending money on when and where. Um, There's but no hiding. Yeah. yeah, you know what's, you know, if someone sends a billion dollars to this guy's wallet address and then he spends it on something, then you would at least see that. So it helps a lot with uh, a transparency, but like a veiled transparency, if that makes sense, right? So that's interesting. Yes. Um, rocking yeah, out. but let's, um, let's, let's go to XRP, right? Is that where you're going next? Well, first, I just want to go... 
a lot of these things, right? So just be careful, right? Because we have what, uh, Peppy ripping, we have Flock, um, F, F O L C K, Flocky, F O L K, yeah, Floki, right? Um, dog with hat, which is just hilarious, uh, right? These things are all ripping. So we're in this kind of meme coin era. And I just, a word to the people out there, like anything, like I said with GameStop, like I said with all of these things, go to the party, go to the dog with hat party if if you want. This thing's gone from uh, 22 cents to $3.50. So it's been an amazing play. But just under, understand that these are very speculative assets. Doge the same way, crashed to nearly zero. Um, so, you know, like me and Steve always talk about, just have a plan. Have, say, I'm going to get out when this thing occurs. So you're not the guy who bought Doge at what 70 something cents, I think was its all time highs. And and yeah, it went down to five cents after that. So again, just have have a plan to say, at this point, I'm wrong, or at this point, I'm right, and I'm going to take my money and do something else with right. But all right, over to Ripple. So here's your your weekly Ripple chart. Yeah, so Ripple finally broke out. A couple of reasons: one, the administration change, uh, very friendly to crypto. It's been that's why the recent Bitcoin's been running too. It's just been a very friendly uh, new administration. The comments coming, but more importantly, um, the SEC is what has been holding back Ripple for S the, the token XRP for years now, and it's I'm for one happy because I've been stacking it monthly. And thank you, Gary Gensler, for keeping the fight going. But Gary Gensler, the SEC chairman, is looks like he's about ready to resign. And that really is the major catalyst that's happening here in Ripple. My prediction is it's probably going to go hit the round number of one this weekend, one dollar. And then it'll retreat probably as people want to take profits from that one dollar level, just like Bitcoin might hit 100,000. People will take profits at that level. Um, but if you're curious, that's the, what's been going on. Look at that break above the AVF that Michael's drawn there. Yeah. And you've heard me talk about this uh, for a couple months now, guys. So it's uh, finally maybe starting to be uh, a real thing. We'll see. And that, that's been, you know, not to tell people what to do, but that's been my plan for all of these, right? I just simply set an alert on the, on the AVWAP from some of these things. And as they break through, mm -hmm. I pick some up. Right. And, you know, uh, we're well above that right now. So that that entry price would have been like 70 cents or so uh, up to 90 cents already. But it's just a good, clear way for me to try to figure out uh, which are the winners and which are, are the losers. Right. We have some stuff like AVAX, uh, Avalanche, right. Hasn't quite got through that. Maybe it does. Uh, because for people who haven't traded a crypto cycle like this, um, first of all, <laughs> You should. They're they're really really fun, even if it's with a very tiny amount of money. Uh, if you're if you're very risk averse, but generally what happens is you have Bitcoin moves first, and then you have what the crypto nerds call alt season, where people become a bunch of money in Bitcoin. A lot of this has to do with kind of this tax structure, where I'm not a tax accountant. I'm just going away what it is in Canada. So obviously don't uh, don't get mad at me if I'm wrong in this, but because you can. In Canada, anyway, these are considered commodities, not currencies, not securities. Um, if you exchange one for another, there's no tax burden on it. So you can take your Ethereum and you can hold your Ethereum. And then if you make a bunch of money in Ethereum, instead of selling that Ethereum into cash, creating a taxable event that you then need to you know, pay Uncle Sam on, if you take that and you move it into Solana or Dogecoin or Dog with Hat or any of these type of things, you end up not having that burden. So you see that happen generally in these, in these um, alt seasons a lot where you just have they move from one security to another security to another security to another security. And it's like rotation that we talk about in the stock market where people make a bunch of money in one thing, they want to take that money and they want to apply it somewhere else. So you get these moves and these can, you know, something like Doge, it could double again and not be at all time highs, right? So if you think it's getting to all time highs, that's a double from here. And if you think it breaks all time highs and then continues, you're talking maybe, you know, a three or four X on this thing. So, uh, I would always just say the way I look at crypto, and I do again a lot of analysis, a lot of trading on crypto. I just look at Bitcoin as like the same way most people look at the S and P five hundred. If if Bitcoin is tanking, 
None of this other stuff, right? Dogecoin, all the, none of this other stuff is doing well. If Bitcoin continues to rally, then you have this bullish market. Just like if the SPY is absolutely tanking, your NVIDIA is not going to 10x the way it did, right? You need the favorable environment. And for me, that's just you use Bitcoin as the index, and then you trade a lot of these other things, again, when you want to have a little fun. Yep, I agree. All right, Steve. Well, I right. think that I think that was a good one. That was all the all the news that we could cover. But holy smokes, it's a lot of news. Yeah, um, lot another of thing, news. another thing, me and Steve were talking about that I think is just important to go over is that this seems like a moment. Um, I, I made a tweet the other day that that kind of popped off a bit, and people liked. Uh, don't think you're a genius right now because everything's very easy. Me and Steve are, are old men, so we've been through this a lot. There are moments where. You buy everything, you make a bunch of money, it's amazing, everything's great, but then that ends at some point. So you have to then go, okay, you know, you have to have a plan to get out, to raise cash, to have a plan for when things become a little bit harder. Um, and, you know, you just, you wait for these moments. And then the other thing is, if you're not participating in moments like this, right, it's, when are you going to? right? Markets ripping, we've got the psychedelic sector doing amazing, you've got crypto going nuts, you've got all these all these sectors doing great. But um, so have fun, just have a plan, right? Yep. All right, guys, I will see you next see week. You.